Hey friends, I'm Leah Carey, a schmex and relationship coach, and I explore how pop culture reflects our understanding of relationships, intimacy, communication, etc. Let's continue our deep dive into the Hulu show, The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Today, we're looking at what I think is one of the most corrosive aspects of purity culture. Though, let's be real, purity culture in general is so incredibly destructive from top to bottom. Today, we're talking about Whitney's husband, Connor, and how his online explorations have impacted their marriage. I'll also share some of the things I've seen with my clients who have come out of purity culture. As always, remember that I'm commenting solely on what we see on the screen, which is heavily edited. We can't be sure that what we see on the screen is a true representation of what happened in real life. And to stay on the right side of the powers that be, I will be mispronouncing some words. Sorry. I'd love to hear what you're thinking, so please drop a comment. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. We ran away from something. I don't want to lie about it anymore. Taylor even asked me the other day about the whole Tinder rumor, Mm. and I denied it again. Okay, so this plays out over the rest of the episode, and they play it kind of for drama. Um, So I'm going to lay it all out, which is that Connor, since he and Whitney have been married, he's been on Tinder, having conversations with people, and he has also been visiting corn sites. Okay. Whitney found out about this in the recent past, and apparently they decided to work this out between themselves. They moved away to Hawaii for several months, and then now they've moved back. I want to start by saying up front, Connor and Whitney have absolutely no obligation to share with anybody, point blank. If somebody comes up and says, hey, I heard blah, 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 they are not obligated to give an answer. People think that they are owed an answer, that somebody is obligated to give them an answer simply because they have a curiosity. That is not how this works. Connor and Whitney have a right to privacy until such time as they decide that they're ready to share. Now, it sounds like Whitney has gotten to the point where she feels like she's been lying to the other women because they asked her if anything was happening and she said no. Untruth? Sure. Understandable? Yeah. Because Whitney and Connor don't need anybody else's input into their personal relationship. They have enough moving parts going on. They don't need 20 other people giving their opinions. I hope that they have had some type of counseling. They certainly needed it. Although also, if they were getting counseling within the church, that probably would have made the whole situation worse. We'll get to it. On the other side is the way that these rumors started is because Connor was on Tinder, somebody saw him there, and spread that on Reddit. Now, let's think about how would somebody know if Connor was on Tinder? Because they were on Tinder too. I mean, the way that people get outed around their schmicky activities is bananas to me. I'm going to out you for doing the same thing that I'm doing or that I'm at least thinking about or I'm getting off on thinking about. But no, 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 I'm going to make your life hell because you're bad. I mean, oh, my God, it's so infuriating. Nobody has a right to out another person, period, ever. If you know something about somebody else's gender, relationships, 
anything. It is nobody's business except that person's, and they get to choose when to share it. I guess there is one caveat to that. I do think it is entirely appropriate if there is somebody in a position of power, um, church, financial, government, whatever, And they are using that power to tell other people, I'm going to take away your rights. And then that person is doing the same thing that they're preaching against. That I think is okay, because that speaks to the hypocrisy of the morality or immorality of any of these systems. But if you're not a person who is using your power to harm other people, Nobody should ever out you. So Connor has been outed by other people who had to have been also on Tinder. And now they're having to deal with the fallout of what has happened. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, I, it's probably hard for you to lie about that. I just hate talking about what happened to me in the same breath as what I did to you. Hey friends, editing Leah here. As I was putting this together, I realized that the way the editors pieced out information throughout this episode and next in order to heighten the intrigue of Whitney and Connor's storyline makes it hard to talk about without some of those contextual pieces. The sin he's talking about is being active on Tinder while he's married, as well as looking at corn. When he says, I hate talking about what happened to me in the same breath as what I did to you, he's referring to the fact that he was essayed as a child. That's a term we can't use on YouTube, so I hope you can pick it up from context. Here's a piece of video I found from 2022, where Connor talks about his, quote, addiction, then says that he had a wake-up call when he told his wife, Whitney, about his activities. I've cut this down a bit because it's obviously really emotional for them, and I don't want to exploit their pain. I was doing everything I could to numb a much deeper pain. Through the help of mental health professionals, I had come to realize that what I was doing was fairly common for people who were sexually assaulted as children. I was a victim of sexual assault when I was five years old. I wanted you to hear this in his own words because it's such an important point. This is extremely common for people who experienced SA and other related traumas as children. It's something I can make a video about in the future if you're interested. Please let me know in the comments. Okay, now that we have the full context, let's get back into it. He is saying, I did these things and they hurt you. And I don't ever want me hurting you to try to be excused by the fact that I was hurt and therefore I was acting out. And honestly, I think that is such a a mature, I hate that word, but we'll go with it, way to look at this. It is the way that says, yes, I experienced harm, but that doesn't mean that I had a right to then pass that harm on to other people sort of like parenting. My father, and this is like, now I'm going to talk about real stuff, not not hypothetical stuff. My father had an incredibly traumatic childhood. That does not change the fact that he then chose to have a child without healing his own stuff. And so he then passed all of that trauma on to me. What I hear Connor saying here is, I had trauma and I did the thing that I most did not want to do, which was pass it on to somebody else because I didn't do my own healing first. I think this is such a beautiful statement of Connor owning his own stuff instead of saying, well, I have trauma. So what else did you expect of me? which honestly is the way a lot of people 
deal with these things, give up any responsibility in this situation, because, well, what would you expect of somebody who has been hurt as badly as I have been hurt? I feel like it flips the script and like turns me into a victim when in this scenario, I'm not. And I definitely want there to be a distinction. I see a lot of contrition and pain on his face and in his voice. I truly believe that Connor wants to do right by Whitney and he wants to fix this situation. Unfortunately, the situation is created by purity culture, but okay, we're not there yet. These were actions I took. I had a real problem and it led to something that really hurt my wife. I'm so sorry. But yeah, I've like reached a point where I really don't care what anybody outside of my inner circle thinks. So this is the next piece of what I think is so beautiful about this interaction with Connor is he's saying, I hurt you and I'm doing my work. I am doing everything I know how to heal myself and heal our relationship. And I want you to be able to get whatever support you need. I want you to be able to go tell whoever you need to tell. And I'm okay with the fact that other people are going to know this really embarrassing, shameful thing about me. That is such an act of grace and love on his part. I'm a little nervous about how, like what they're going to think. I don't know if they're going to hate you or if they're going to hate me for making the choice to stay with you. This is so painful because Whitney is now having to deal with the fear that if she admits to what has happened, her friends are either going to turn against her husband and she'll then be caught in the middle or her friends are going to turn against her because she has made a decision they don't approve of. This is what happens when we are living in a culture that has such incredible strictures on it that it's like we can't move. All we're allowed to do is live perfectly. And if we don't live perfectly, then there's nowhere to go and there's nowhere to get support because I'm afraid that everybody in my circle will be just as judgmental of me as the church has been, and as I have been taught to be of myself, and as I have been taught to be of others. This is, I would say, part of the emotional abuse that is created by purity culture. Whitney, did you mm. say you had something you want to talk about? Um, yeah, mm. there is. There was a rumor that Connor was on Tinder. I don't know if you guys remember that rumor. Yeah, <laughs> of did. course you do. Yeah. I lied about it because I was embarrassed. Again, I just want to remind you that lying about this out of embarrassment is not only so incredibly normal, but also you're not required to share the truth with other people just because they ask. There was more to that. He had been struggling with a addiction. There's a lot of back and forth in the Schmecksch education community about whether corn addiction is a real thing. The way that I would talk about it is as compulsions. That just sort of pulls us out of the realm of having to defend whether or not this is an addiction. Let's say that Connor has a compulsion for looking at these kind of pictures. Now, I want to do a quick thought experiment with you. Let's imagine that what he's looking at are pictures of something else. They are pictures of puppies. If you have a compulsion for looking at pictures of puppies, is that then a troublesome addiction? Is that something that we would use this same sort of shamey language around that I've sinned and I've done something terribly wrong? We would treat it as 
if it is causing a problem in your life, if you're not interacting with your partner and your friends and your kids because you're so invested in looking at puppies, yes, that is something that needs to be dealt with. But it's not sinful. It's not shamed. It's just a thing that needs to be dealt with. But because we carry all of this baggage and shame around schmexuality, when people are looking at those kind of pictures, it suddenly is like, the world is on fire and something terrible has happened. I have worked with clients coming out of purity culture who were sent to Schmex Addicts Anonymous because they looked at corn once a month. Now, does that sound like a compulsion to you? Because it sure as heck doesn't sound like a compulsion to me. It sounds like something that you do occasionally, because it's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. It's got a whole lot of stigma around it. And if you're dealing with internalized shame, that's going to be something that you are drawn to. I I should actually do a video at some point. Let me know if you're interested on Schmex Addicts Anonymous, because I did some research at one point. And what I found in their literature was so incredibly disturbing. The fact that we are sending mostly men to these groups for occasional use, like very casual use of these websites, it's absolutely bananas. We would not send somebody to a 12-step recovery program for looking occasionally looking at pictures of puppies. We just wouldn't. But that is how purity culture looks at experiences of other people's bodies. Even one experience of somebody's body outside of your spouse, your opposite sex spouse, means that you are not just sinful, but potentially worthy of being excommunicated and probably an addict. It is so harmful. Now, on the other side, I've worked with women who have come out of purity culture, whose men have been sent to these programs. And it's even worse on the wives, because the wives are fed this line of absolute horse shit about how you have to make yourself as attractive as possible so that your husband won't stray. You have to make sure that he has absolutely everything he needs at home. He gets every single need filled by you and by your body so that he won't stray. And this one blows my mind. If he needs to go through a period of celibacy in order to get this addiction under control, then it's your job to not tempt him. Your schmexuality is only valid in any way that it serves him. But if he needs to go through some recovery program, then you are by extension, not allowed to experience your schmexuality at all. Because if he's not having it, then nobody gets to have it, including you. It is, oh, 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 it is so awful. It is so dehumanizing to both the men and the women. I have feelings. I have a lot of feelings about this and none of them are good. I did not come from a purity culture household. So none of this was part of my upbringing. However, the reason why I treasure working with people who are coming out of purity culture is because the level of shame and repression that I experienced as a result of my childhood with my father mirrors so closely the experience of people coming out of purity culture that 
it just feels natural for me. People coming out of purity culture are in fact some of my favorite clients to work with. And it's why I feel so passionate about this experience that Whitney and Connor are having. Okay, let's leave it there for today. I am Leah Carey, Schmecks and Relationship Coach. You can find all of the information about my work with couples, with individuals, purity culture or not, all of that's in the description below. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.